Hello, my name is Stephen York. I'm the pastor of the United Methodist Church in Stonington, Maine. Many people would like to believe that whatever happens in life is the result of fate or God, or that something is simply God's will for them and thereby it's out of their control. I want you to know that the Bible is clear that we have freedom and that we have also responsibility for our choices and that in making choices we can create our own heaven or our own hell. In this week's sermon I'm talking about doing that. We can look at life through a positive constructive way and live it to its fullest or we can look at life negatively and we can live destructively and live life at the bare minimalist level. I trust today that as you listen to the sermon that you will be challenged to create heaven wherever you go. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week, this is Stephen York saying goodbye. I'm chuckling because I just realized it was 20 years ago. <laughs> I heard an amazing title to a sermon that I that has never left me. There are very few, I've heard thousands of sermons in my life, but there are very few that I remember the title. And this title was creating your own heaven or hell. I don't remember who was the preacher, and I don't remember who, what they said or the, what text they used. But as I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you this morning, the themes that are expressed in that title stuck with me. So with apologies and gratitude to whoever preached this 20 years ago, I'm now going to preach my own sermon, Creating Your Own Heaven <coughs> and Your Own Hell. Life is a matter of perspective. When we think about the shift, I was talking with some of my students this week younger students, um, probably in their 20s, I mentioned a couple of musicians. I mentioned Jerry Lee Lewis, and they had blank looks on their faces. <coughs> and I said, oh yeah. And then I mentioned Great Balls of Fire, and they vaguely heard of that. But any of us who have had the joy of raising children know that taste in music and in dress and in a variety of other things can be heaven for one person in the house and hell <laughs> for the other. When I uh, was talking with Zachary, who is my 17-year-old, on Skype this week. You all now know what Skype is. Uh, Zachary asked me about heaven and, and hell, and he was talking about he, there were some kids in his school that were telling him that if he joined their church, that they could get him into the to the seventh heaven, right up close to the throne. My descendants have had widely different religious expressions throughout periods of their lives. For them, it probably has been heaven, and for me, it's been hell. It's just interesting how 
music or literature or movies or whatever it is, for one person can bring great pleasure and for other people it can be absolute hell. There are those who have great comfort in making very organized lists and planning step by step the sequence of what they're going to do. And then there are others among us who just like to let it fly and figure it out mid-flight. And I can guarantee you that for the person who likes to be thoroughly organized, the mid-flight correction person can be held if you like everything to be predictable. Contrary, those who like the mid-flight correction business and are wanting to sort of be spontaneous and extemporaneous, look at the list making and say to themselves, oh my God, if I had to put myself through that, I'd rather just not do it at all. So it is a matter of perspective how we approach life. The music for one can be heavenly. When Zachary comes to see me over Thanksgiving this year, I, I, I'm, I will be forever thankful on Thanksgiving Day for iPods <laughs> and earplugs. And I'm sure the feeling is mutual. When Zachary asked me about the afterlife, I said, I've never been there, but I can tell you, as I told him, that I tried to spend my life creating heaven here by the way that I interact with life, by the way I enjoy life, by the way I engage with friends and meaningful work and all the joys that come with the things that give me personal pleasure. The list of things that I enjoy may be hell for you and vice versa. But the truth is I think all of us are appreciative of the words that Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is among you. And that we really want to live in an atmosphere where there is love and joy and peace and contentment. And it's not perfect. I wish that I could say if we just followed a list, it would work or a formula, but it does not. 